Welcome to Film and Page, I'm Dominic, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the casting news for Strange New Worlds, the casting of Captain Robert April. So this is controversial, uh, this news, and it dropped a few days ago, and the reason it's controversial is because the character of Captain Robert April made an appearance in one episode of the Star Trek The Animated Series back in the mid-70s, and in that episode he was portrayed as an old white guy. As you can see from this picture, Adrian Holmes, the character or the actor that has been cast to play uh, Captain Robert April in the new Star Trek series *Strange New Worlds*, is a black guy. So now, if this is this, this is an old argument, and it's been pounded into the ground, it's been beaten to death. I've talked about this on my channel in the past, and uh, so I wanted to give my take on this casting news. So when it comes to Star Trek fans, I've noticed there's a few different kinds of fans. So I'm going to talk about two different types. There's more than two different types, but I'm just going to talk about two types in this video. We have one type that doesn't care about canon. They don't care about it. So these kind of changes, it does not bother them. Then you have another camp of fans who are uh, sticklers for canon. They want everything to look and match up and they don't they don't like canon violations and things like that so if the enterprise looked a certain way you know in the original series then it should look that way in this new series strange new worlds now i happen to fall into the category of i'm a fan i'm, I'm one of the fan that is a stickler for canon when it comes to star trek now i've long since given up on that because star trek had always had a, did a really bad job of being consistent with its canon but whenever they can stay consistent with canon, I do enjoy it. And for me, it makes the universe seem more real to me, if that makes sense, when everything has like a visual continuity and stuff like that. Now, obviously, you know, there, there has to be some, uh, you know, give with when it comes to canon as a fan, because Star Trek is a series that's been around so long that it's almost impossible for there not to be some kind of violation canon violation somewhere down long down the line or some kind of type of inconsistency and on top of that it's it's just the nature of how star trek uh, was born like star trek was a show that was started in the 60s and so it has that 60s look uh even though the budget was high for the show during that time uh they still tv shows i don't think had the kind of money sunk into them like they do now but so it has that like cheap look to it, you know, the, the, the old style special effects. So then it's hard to make all the newer stuff kind of line up with that, that, that look. So, and that, that's part of the, just the very origin of Star Trek is part of the reason why there's always inconsistencies with canon. But uh, the 90s Star Trek, you know, Next Generation, Voyager and all that, whenever they referenced the original series, they always went out of their way to painstakingly make sure it all lined up and it all matched. But you always had inconsistencies, like with the Klingons in the original series. You know, they changed the makeup for the movie, the motion picture, because that's the way Gene Roddenberry always wanted them to look, but they just didn't have the money to do it. So then how do you explain that? And they have ex tried to explain it in comics and stuff like that, and then... The best explanation for me personally was the one that Worf gave on uh, the episode "The Trouble with Tr uh, the Trouble with Tribbles," or that where they go back in time and they go on the and they meet the uh, you know the original crew, of the Enterprise, and things like that. And then Worf's in the bar, and you see the other Klingons that just look like ordinary humanoids. So then Doctor Bashir and and uh, O'Brien ask him like, well, "What the hell's going on? How come they don't have ridges?" And then Worf just says. You know what happened a long time ago, and we don't like to talk about it with outsiders. We just keep it to ourselves. That's it. That was a perfect explanation. Good enough for me. And then Enterprise had to go out of its way and try to explain it. I always thought the explanation was kind of unnecessary and somewhat stupid. But at least they tried to patch a, a hole, I guess, in the canon. So now the newer Trek, they, the writers don't seem to care about canon anymore whenever they it's almost like they, they they're doing this visual reboot so now whenever they reference anything from the original series it doesn't look like the original original series is all updated so it's almost like they're retconning the look of the original series out and uh this is almost like an alternate timeline that's how it feels to me even though they say it's prime to me it feels like an alternate timeline so then they can make changes like this so now as far as I'm concerned, I have no problem with this casting, even though I am uh, a stickler for canon. 
uh, I know that there's there's certain changes that have been done in, in Star Trek as far as canon goes that some of them bother me, some of them don't. And this one doesn't. I have no problems with this one. And I'll explain that a little bit more later on in the video. But first, I just want to talk about my background with the character of Captain Robert April and uh, a little bit about what this character is all about and a little bit about the history of it. So my first... Uh, time I ever heard of the character of Captain Robert April uh, was in 1993 when I picked up a copy of the Star Trek chronology. Now this was a book that was put out by Michael Okuda, I think his name is, and his wife. And they did a lot of research and at that point in time when this book came out you had the original series, you had the six original movies, and you had five seasons of uh, The Next Generation. That's all there was for Star Trek at that time, so that's all the book encompasses. So when I got that, that was like my Star Trek Bible. And what it was, it was a, a timeline, basically. It was almost like a history book. It, it, it gave out all these different dates. So on this date, the Enterprise launched. On this date, you know, uh, Kirk graduated from the Academy. On this date, Picard was born. So it went through all the timeline. So And, and they kind of wrote it as a guide for writers, so they can kind of keep track of events. Now, the one thing to note about that book is the book itself... It only referenced things in Star Trek that was considered canon. So only things that it, that it uh, considered canon was anything that appeared on TV and film. So it never made reference to any comic, any comic books, any uh, any novels, or anything like that. And the other thing it didn't make any reference to was Star Trek the Animated Series. Because at that point in time, Star Trek the Animated Series was not considered canon. And uh, so... Star Trek the Animated Series was something that for years and years and years I never got to see because it wasn't re-ran anywhere. Uh, I was aware that it existed, but I had never seen it growing up. I never really got to watch it until like maybe like mid-2000s when I could download some episodes off the internet and then never really got to see uh, uh, any of the episodes until uh, they, they, they put them on Netflix. So I'm not really super familiar with the anim Star Trek The Animated Series, and I haven't watched all the episodes. I've seen a few of them here and there. So at that point in time, this is all the knowledge I had of Captain Robert April of uh, just what was in that Star Trek chronology. And they used this picture, and this is a picture of Gene Roddenberry there as uh, the picture for Captain Robert April. Well, the other thing to uh, that's important to point out about that Star Trek chronology is the chronology itself is not canon. What I mean by that, so even if they make reference to an event or something that happened on a certain date, they if uh, if a movie or one of the shows has an event or expands upon that event and it contradicts the chronology, the film and TV show is always right. It's canon. The chronology isn't. So that's important to uh, that's important to point out. So this version of Captain Robert April, this is not a uh, canonical version of the character, this picture of Gene Roddenberry. It was just a stand-in. And this is what the book had to say. First, this is what the book had to say about the, the animated Star Trek show. The animated Star Trek, the show produced several years after the network run of the first series, is considered controversial in that there is significant question as to whether these episodes are part of the official Star Trek saga. Convincing arguments can be made for both sides of this issue, especially since Gene Roddenberry and Dorothy Fontana were both very actively involved with its planning and production. On the other hand, in later years, Gene would express regret at some elements of the show and instructed Paramount not to consider this series as part of the official Star Trek universe. For this reason, we have not included material from the animated series, despite our fondness for many of these stories. The only exception is to some events in Spock's childhood, as depicted in Yesteryear, written by Dorothy Fontana. So now, when this series uh, aired in the 70s, and you know, while all the other Star Treks were going on in the 80s, there was some debate about whether this was canon or not. No one was really sure. Was it canon, or was it not canon? And so... Apparently, in the late 80s, uh, Gene Roddenberry just struck it down for whatever reason. He had problems with it, even though he was involved with it, and declared it non-canon. And so for a long time, this series was considered non-canon. So the uh, character of Robert April 
he only ever appeared in like comics and books and stuff like that but he wasn't considered a character that was canon and not only that if you watch the original series uh the animated series this character is somewhat of a retcon because in the original series the the lineage of captains it went captain christopher pike and kirk that's it pike was the first captain if, if you watch the original series because when they go to the mirror universe Kirk asks the computer to, you know, give me the history of the ship and all the captains and how I got command. So it lists the first commander was Captain Pike, and then Kirk got it in command by assassinating Captain Pike. There's no mention of Robert April. Uh, so if the, if it was canon at that point in time, there would have been some mention because there would have been some mirror universe counterpart to that. So this is something that was retconned in by the animated series later on in the 70s. And so here's what the chronology had to say about the character of Captain Robert April. 2245, first Starship Enterprise NCC-1701 is launched from the San Francisco Yards facility in orbit around Earth. Captain Robert April assumes command of the Constitution-class ship and begins a five-year mission of exploration. One of the ship's designers is a young engineer named Lawrence Mervick. Captain Robert April is not based on any direct evidence from any episode or film, but is included at Roddenberry's suggestion. The character name is from Gene's first proposal for the Star Trek series back in 1964, which listed April as Enterprise Captain and Series Lead. April was depicted in the animated Star Trek episode, The Counter Clock Incident. So Gene Roddenberry kind of wanted the Enterprise to have some history. And so that's why he kind of suggested, well, maybe include that there was another captain even before Pike. So Kirk would have been the third captain. So now, at this point, the character is not, is kind of canon, but not quite. Because the, the chronology itself wasn't canon. So if there had been a movie, or if there had been an episode that had pointed out that there was no other captain before Pike, then that, that would have won. But now, these days, the animated series is considered canon. So the character has been brought in, back into canon. And the reason why it is canon again is because it, it was recognized as canon back in 2006. Because on November 21st, 2006, that was the release date for the Star Trek The Animated Series on DVD. And I guess Paramount figured that they could sell more copies of the box set if fans uh, realized that this was now canon and it counted, where before that, all those years, it wasn't canon. So this brings us back to Strange New Worlds. So where this character has always been kind of in flux, you know, there was a point in time where people weren't sure if this character was in canon, and then Gene Roddenberry said that the animated series wasn't canon, so there, you know, so the, that episode didn't count, and then we just had this footnote of the character in the Star Trek chronology. So as far as the overall uh, saga of Star Trek goes, Captain Robert April has always been somewhat, in my opinion, a footnote character, never like a main character. And that's all that I've ever known of him, really, is I knew he had an appearance on the original series and then whatever they wrote, wrote up about him in that chronology. Now, I know he's appeared in other things like ex the expanded uh, canons with the uh, novels and comics and stuff like that, but the books and the comics don't count as far as canon goes. It's what appears on screen. So now, the other thing, or the reason why this casting doesn't bother me, is because when they make these kind of changes, when they change characters, either take a character that was male and flip the gender, gender and make it a female, or whatever sometimes it's sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't and i think it works differently for some people so i think it has a lot to do with how much you have invested in the character on a personal level so for me like this kind of change wouldn't work if it was if they had race swapped kirk or Picard. to me that wouldn't work uh, you know, just because, you know, I'm too attached to those characters. For me, the only person that could ever really be Captain Kirk is, is uh, William Shatner. And the only person that could ever re really be Patrick Stewart is, uh, or the, I mean, John Luke Picard is Patrick Stewart. And same thing for Cisco. If they somehow rebooted Deep Space Nine or they just retconned it that all of a sudden Cisco was a white guy for some reason, 
I still, I no, it, it just couldn't be done. I just wouldn't accept it because he's always been, you know, Avery Brooks and Avery Brooks is a black guy. And that's how I know the character. So I have, I'm, you know, I'm familiar with that character. But Captain Robert April is a character I'm not, I don't have any attachments to. I'm not familiar with the character. I know about the character, but, you know, he's, he's never, he's never a character I've really given any thought about. He's always, like I said before, just like a footnote character. And so that's why this doesn't bother me. And I'm actually kind of surprised. Well, no, what am I saying? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that people kick up a stink about it. And now I think it's just people are so entrenched in this weird culture war that there, there can be no middle ground with anything. You have to be totally on board with something or hate the guts out of it. That's how, that's how it is. So it's this weird divisiveness. So for me, you now, and I'm not a fan of the new Trek stuff either. Like I didn't like Discovery. You know, I'm, I think Picard is really boring and disappointing. And so my last holdout is Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And even a few things about that show, uh, what I've seen so far, uh, I really, I don't know. I have to wait till the show comes out. But as far as this change goes with this cat, with this actor playing Captain Robert April, that change doesn't bother me at all. I don't care about it. Because I'm not invested in the character. The character has no attachment for me or any special meaning at all. Now... There is a case where where they have taken a character and then flipped the gender around and and actually the change i actually prefer the change and i've given this example before is the character of starbuck in the reimagined battlestar galactica series that came out in 2004. so i St battlestar galactica was something i always had an interest in when i was a child but i could never get to see it i vaguely got a few caught a few episodes when i was really young i couldn't remember much about them and then, you know, uh, what it's just whatever books or comics I could kind of get my hands on. But seeing it or watching any of it, it was, I was very limited. Uh, I, it's just, well, I just something I couldn't see. Because back in the day, when a show went off the air, that's it, it was gone. <laughs> you couldn't see it. And some some shows they reran, some they didn't. Battlestar Galactica was one they didn't rerun. Even if you had cable, you still couldn't get to see it. Even to this day, I have not seen the original Battlestar Galactica series except for the uh, pilot movie. But I did get to see uh, the reimagined one. Because I always had an interest in Battlestar Galactica. I always wanted to watch it, but never could watch it. So that 2004 one, that one I got to see all of it. I just loved that show. It was one of my favorite sci-fi shows. And the character of Car Starbuck, played by Katie Sackhoff, is, was my favorite character in the show. So for me, where I where I never got a chance to have any kind of a connection to the character of Starbuck that was played by Dirk Benedict uh, back in the day, for me, when I look at him, he's Face Man from A-Team more than Starbuck. Uh, for me, it's the new one. It's Katie Sackhoff. That's my definitive version of Starbuck. And so I think these kind of changes kind of depends on how much connection you have to the character and whether you're going to like the change or not and how they approach the change. But this is with such an obscure Trek character, I don't think it's a big deal. I have no problems with it at all. And uh, so that's my opinion on the change of this character. Uh, so I'm uh, now I have to admit I'm not super excited to watch Strange New Worlds because I don't have a lot of faith left in Star Trek, but I am going to give the show a chance, see if it's any good. It's my last, this is my last uh, go around with Star Trek. If this show sucks, I'm done with Star Trek. Uh, this show was most likely aimed at people for me, people who are fans of the original series. If this can't suck me in, nothing will do it after this. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you at the next one. I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.